I'm Noelle Wells. And where are you from? I'm from San Antonio, Texas. When did you become interested in making films? Um, I feel like it was a slow realization over a long number of years, but if I'm honest with myself, I always have thought of stories and moving pictures, and I've always liked telling stories, so I guess my mind kind of works like that. Who inspired you growing up? Um, I really liked comedians. Uh, I really, I watched Saturday Night Live and that was very inspiring. I really loved Molly Shannon, uh, Sherry O'Terry. Um, I loved Jim Carrey and Whoopi Goldberg. And who else did I, I like absolutely love? I really love Holly Hunter. And my favorite directors, even from like a very young age, uh, were the Coen brothers. Fargo was my favorite. When that movie came out, I was like, that's my favorite movie. And I wasn't being cute. I really thought that, I mean, that is one of my favorite movies. <laughs> so you started through acting. How did this all come about? I think acting was just the way in to get to this point. Um, I really do like performing, and um, I think I'm really good at uh, channeling characters, but I think you can use that skill set to also write characters. And um, so I use that for the script. Um, and... Um, I've always written for myself, and I, but I've always wanted to make the bigger thing. I never really wanted to be an actor, like, pick me, put me in your movie. Like, I'd be like, I want to do it. I want to act, but I also want to do the thing. I want to make the movie. So when did you decide that this is what you wanted to do? Um, I remember in college, I, I went to college. I studied film in college, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. Everybody was like, oh, I'm going to be a director, but I didn't seem to have the same skill sets. I didn't really know a lot about movies, and um, I had not watched like every movie in the Criterion Collection, so I just was like, well, I guess I will never catch up. Um, so I did a lot of production. I learned how to do everything behind the scenes, um, but I was like secretly kind of taking classes, moving myself towards, I guess, what I wanted to be, and I remember... Um, standing up in front of my class right before I was about to graduate because they were asking, well, what do you want to do after this? And I said to the class, I was like, oh, I want to be, I want to do comedy on television. But I remember thinking, and I was like, and then I'm going to make movies. But I didn't say that part out loud. So I didn't really, like, you know, even though I was working on scripts all the time, um, I didn't really make the decision to do the movie or to actually just make it happen no matter what until... Um, after Saturday Night Live. So you wrote, directed, and star in Mr. Roosevelt, which premiered at South by Southwest mm -hmm. and won the Audience Award for Narrative Spotlight. It's also your debut film. Mm -hmm. What made you want to make this film? I, won I made this film because I knew I could tell this story effectively, and no matter what budget level, I wrote the script knowing that if I had to pay for it all by myself, it would still be an, a, a movie that I think people would want to watch. Um, I did what I wrote this because this is what I could do at the time, uh, and I'm really proud of it. Um, but yeah, I wanted to tell a story of somebody who's not who's kind of like me but isn't quite me, um, and sort of represent like. I guess just the malaise of being a millennial, like not having much direction and feeling like the world really let you down, um, but capture it in like a sort of absurd story. Instead of it being like so dramatic, I wanted to flip it on its head and make it feel inconsequential, but it means it's the biggest thing in this person's head. So um, summarize what the film is about. Um, it's about a struggling comedian who moved out to Los Angeles. Uh, seriously, it doesn't have anything to do with me. Um, she moved to Los Angeles and broke up with her boyfriend at the time. And then um, she gets a call that somebody very close to them falls ill. And so she races back to Austin. And then the movie sort of takes place when she uh, stays at the house of her ex-boyfriend and his new really amazing girlfriend and just sort of butting heads with uh, him and her and how not only... He's changed, Austin's changed, and what that really, how that reflects on her and her failures. So I know you just said it's not about your life. No, but, uh, not at all. <laughs> was there much you borrowed from your own life in making this film? I think when I walk around day to, just like in a day to day, in day to day walking, as we do on days, um, I, I'll hear people say something. And I'll be like, oh, that would, that's a funny character, or I'll do something, and I'll be like, oh, that's really ridiculous if somebody would do that. And I feel like the movie's just a collection of things like that. 
taking bits that I've that I've experienced or I've seen other people experience or I've interacted with human beings in a certain way and then taking them on, figuring out if there's a way to put them into this story. Um, so no, it's not really me, but a lot of things did happen to me in some version of reality. I just like the authenticity of like what would really happen or what people would really say or grounding it in a sort of person that I've interacted with before. And what were some issues you wanted to address through the film? I really... My biggest one is, I do think there's like a balance between amb ambition and your career and friendship and family and I feel like I was so focused on like succeeding at a certain point in my life that I really left people behind that had always been there for me and really supported me and I didn't really think about how that impacted them. And I think a lot of people go through that and I think it's just sort of that exchange of like trying to go from a small pond and get into a big pond, realize the big pond is just going to eat you up and then by the time you go back to the small pond everybody's just like well moved on without you and I, 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 I wanted, that was kind of like the issue that I was exploring but then also this person sort of moving out of her self-absorption and seeing what she's done and then sort of taking responsibility for it and then realizing that she can strike that balance in the future. Like, she's not a monster, but um, maybe from here on out she'll be a little bit more thoughtful with how she treats people. You have a great cast in the film. How did it all come together? The cast is so amazing. It was mostly friends or people that I had been fans of through comedy. Um, Weirdly, all the women in the film are, they're all with my manager. That was just totally an accident. It's just, I've known them for a long time and they just happened. So Daniela Panita just happened to be the perfect gen. We auditioned lots of people and she was there the whole time. And I was like, I really think it can't be so easy that it's just Daniela. Um, but it is Danielle and she's so amazing in the film and so um, that really worked out. And then Britt is just an incredible Celeste and she's also with my manager and it was just really sweet that we had, we all came to this moment together. Um, and I've always been a fan of Nick Thune and his comedy and I asked him if he would do it and he just like got on a plane and came and did the movie. And Andre Highland, um, when I first moved to LA, he had a show called the Jesse Miller Talk Show and he had flyers all over the place and I was like, dude, this guy's doing, he's making things the way that I want to make things, which is just like doing it. And um, we had a meeting and he agreed to be in the film and um, all the Austin people I auditioned and a lot, most of the people that are in Austin were from, or like actually Austin actors and so that was really exciting to be able to put them in the film and uh, give those people an opportunity because they're all really funny. Like there's just a really great community there. So at the end of the film, I felt like if it were a series, I'd totally look forward to the next season. Have you thought about doing a series? No. But I think you can just assume if I'm ever in a movie that I wrote, it's like another chapter. <laughs> Even if it's a totally different genre of film, it's just another chapter for this person. <laughs> uh, do you have any pets currently? I do. I have a cat. His name is Mr. Feeney. Have you had any uh, traumatic pet deaths? I don't know. This is really not going to make my case for uh, me saying that this has nothing to do with me. But uh, I ha <laughs> Mr. Feeney got very sick when I left him with my ex-boyfriend when I moved to LA. <laughs> so I thought he was I thought he was going to die, and that was a very real experience. Um, he's he's good and I, I used all my savings to save him and I did have a friend at the time who was like why would you do that it's just a fucking cat so that's where that line comes from and I remember just being so hysterical that my friend could be so callous and unempathetic and I was just like what do you mean it's just a fucking cat I like lost my shit I don't think I talked to this person for like months it was so heartless um but yeah I had an, the only other I mean I've had, I grew up with tons of animals I really love animals um and sometimes I would they I mean I they were my family and I when I went to college um my parents put both of my dogs to sleep without like talking to me about it and I don't I think they're most of the movies like kind of coping with that grief of like I didn't get a chance to say goodbye like I let I like pursued my life I, I kind of took them for granted and I never really got a chance to say goodbye and so yeah that's pretty real 
Am I made? <laughs> Have we lost everybody? And he's like, too real. <laughs> no, I, I love this story. <laughs> so I love the images um, used in the opening credit yeah. sequence. Were those images you took? Yes. Those were, those were pictures, um, I think like 90% of them were pictures I took while I was in college with my boyfriend that the movie's loosely based on, but isn't based on my life at all. <laughs> um, but yeah, when I was in college, I started taking film photography, um, which actually made me feel like I could be a director when I first started. They, everything had moved over to digital and everything I shot I thought looked really terrible and I was like, oh, I don't have like the inborn talent to do this. And then uh, one summer I took a point and shoot camera when I was in New York doing an internship and took tons of pictures and I didn't have money to develop the film. So I just, I took 36 rolls, didn't get any of them developed. And then when I came back uh, to Austin and started working again, I over uh, like three months I got them film developed and I realized like, oh, I have an eye, like I actually had an eye when I'm not like over, when I'm not looking over my shoulder judging everything, uh, like my natural instinct kicked in. And so, um, so those were those pictures, some of those pictures uh, that were in the front. Uh, but you do photography as well now, yeah? Yeah, so I've been, since college I've uh, taken, I've done, I do photography, I guess kind of like a hobby. Um, I have had, film photography featured and some exhibitions. Um, one of the pictures I took was on the front cover of Oxford American. That was just like an accident. Uh, I've, it's sort of an ongoing project that doesn't really have necessarily a place, but I like to share them and I like documenting things. Um, I like documenting my friends and sort of now that I'm working in film, I document sort of like the behind the scenes of like film projects that I'm on or like when I do television. So I think one day I'll have like a really, it'll be like a cool thing to look back on. Um, and yeah, for right now, I don't really know what to do with it. So I saw your short film, Siri Finds Out <laughs> Steve Jobs Died. Uh -huh. I'm not sure if that's your first short film <laughs> or if that's just what IMDb says. Um, <laughs> so explain uh, what it's about and what drew you to make that film. Yeah, no, I've been making, um, since, like, high school, I've been making, like, sketches and shorts. That is on my IMDb because it went super viral, uh, and it literally came out of my friend, my friend Matt, like, Steve Jobs had just died, and he was like, oh, somebody should do a sketch where Siri, like, something with Siri and finding out Steve Jobs died, and I was like, oh, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I wrote it, and we shot it, and, uh, I put it online, and it went, really viral, like people, because it's basically, we tell Siri Steve Jobs died and then she gets beside herself and essentially becomes suicidal. Um, yeah, and we're all interacting with her like she's very real, because she is, right, why not? So what's the difference for you between being in your own film or project versus someone else's? I think with my film, I'm thinking about it like all the moving parts and I'm sort of in charge of making sure that everything comes together. It's like being a boss and then working in other people's projects you just kind of adapt to what they need and service the vision of what they're creating. Um, I like to be involved with projects on an acting side though where I do get to be a little bit collaborative uh, and and for the most part that that's what I get to do. Um, but yeah, one's, one's a little bit easier. <laughs> one's just like kind of like Say my lines, let's riff a little bit, I get to go home. The other one is just like no sleep for two years. So to write, direct, and star in a film, plus pull it off, is a pretty unique skill. Who do you look up to that does this well? That's a great question. I think the only people that I'm thinking of that do this, do a lot of people do this? I think like Albert Brooks did it and like Woody Allen. Um, I guess Lena Dunham does it. I never really even considered this as like a thing that people did. It just felt like a thing that I had to do if I was going to do it. I, I don't know. I just didn't think I was like pretty enough to just be an actress. Like, I, did, I don't know. So I was like, well, if I want to do this, I have to make my own content. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> but I guess Albert Brooks would be like, Albert Brooks would be somebody that I would look up to because he was very funny and uh, I like his movies. <laughs>
So do you have another project in the works that you'll write, direct, and star in? Yeah, I have, I have two projects in mind. Um, I'm really looking forward to writing more ensemble uh, pieces so they'll have more time to actually direct. But because I like acting so much, I can't not, like, if, it's, if I'm making a movie, I might as well put myself in it if it, if it goes that way. <laughs> yeah. So would you skip putting yourself in it? Maybe if everybody gets it. If everybody was like, oh, we get that Noelle can do all these different characters and now we'll think about putting her in these bigger projects. And so if other people are creating opportunities for me to act in, then I'd stop. <laughs> then I'd stop doing it, I guess. <laughs> so what's next? What's next? There's so much happening. Well, the movie's coming out. It's going to be in theaters. And then after that, I'm just going to go lock myself uh, in a room and just work on some other scripts. Because that's where it starts. Yeah. Excellent. A lot of crying. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>